Hey guys, do you know how the fact that I've managed to go off my hammer for the entire time? I can simply just do a little bit of a, well, a flaming hammer technique, but only for once or twice. But even I know they don't usually have like, I don't know. Hey, what is up ladies and gentlemen? I am Joy here once again, and I'm back for some more of the Maxi Toys videos. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to more as play of Kirby and the Amazing Mirror for the Game Boy Advance. So last time we actually did completely done with the forms of um, Area 3 by the forms of Cabbage Cavern. And um, despite the fact that I did die several times in this world, most likely because of how the fact that the actual uh, the level design in this game is actually uh, easily one of the weakest of the level designs in the Kirby games in my opinion though, because of due to like, you know, it has way too many spikes and it's also uh, because of how the fact that it's so hard to dodge um, enemies sometimes, even the actual premises of the forms of how the fact that some of these um, enemy placements can sometimes uh, fluctuate to you. But even then, no, that might be some consumption. So, yeah, uh, anyways, though, so today for this episode is the fact that we're going to be hit off to the next area slash world, if I like to call it for that department's right there. Next world we're going to be hitting to is the forms of Area 4 or World 4. And that is the forms of Mustard Mountain, because as far as I'm aware, because of how the fact that uh, the letter begins with an M between each of its letters, see for then know all the sentences, like you see that right there, Mustard Mountain that we're in. Well, I don't think we can actually explore for everything until we get ourselves our map first. So even then though, we need to go into here, and I suggest you use the sword ability at first, just in case you weren't able to actually reach for that point, and you should be able to make there in time, but you have to be very fast and accurate though, before you're able to make yourselves there, and that way we get ourselves the map function onto the forms of, well, Mustard Mountain. So, there's quite a lot of, like, individual pathways we can go to. Like, they, the paths themselves aren't separated now, so if you know, they aren't, like, jointed, unlike any forms of the other two areas. But at least they've only got separated, unlike any forms of, um, you know, the first area, or in this case, World 1, and World 2, and especially World 3. So if you know, they're expecting so much so there, so... Um, uh, for Mustard Mountain though, anyway, um, as far as I'm aware for this kind of stuff, it's basically more accurately a fire-based world, which even then, I don't think we actually come across into a fire-based environment until we get to the future rooms throughout the majority of the forms of Mustard Mountain, so... Yeah, as far as I can see how this will turn out to be, so you know. So today was actually forms of, um, the 23rd of June, 2018, so, um... You know how the fact that yesterday that, um, you know, Mario Tennis Aces has been just came out yesterday on the Nintendo Switch. Um, aside, of, um, aside from now when I've already got myself, um, actually I might as well able to, yeah, I might, I might as well able to come back for that later. Because even then, no, that way it will actually take me to a different location. And this is how the Mustard Mountain looks like. It's basically the, uh, the fiery world type of syndrome because you can see the actual, um, oh god. I got caught by the cookery enemy. Well, at least we need to know. Okay, it says cooking. So yeah, um, speaking of cooking, um, here's the returning Kirby ability by the forms of ever sensing Kirby Superstar. We have the returning Cook Kirby, and just like any forms of uh, any forms of Kirby Superstar counterpart, um, if you're actually going to be using that just once, um, you actually transform enemies into food. See, so Fernando, they can able to actually just get a lot more health than that. So expecting so, that's pretty handy though. So, well, here's the returning mini boss fight. Ever since any forms of um, you know in Kirby Nightmare and Dreamland, but this time around though, his name was actually forms of. Um, uh, Fan Fan, which is basically an elephant type of mini boss. So you can then know that he's actually a lot more harder than the likes of how it does it in Nightmare and Dreamland, in my opinion, just because of how the fact that, well, first of all, he moves way too fast at one point or another, and plus, um, the way how the fact that he might be a little bit too unpredictable at times to dodge through, especially noticeable how the fact that with the forms of like, if you ever used to with the forms of Kirby and uh, Kirby Nightmare and Dreamland from before, how the fact that he moves way too fast this time. See, for now, that makes it pretty sufficiency right there. So, anyways, though, uh, there are actually uh, two multitude of pathways we can actually go to at this particular area right there. Granted, though, I've only got about two units of health left, which is not good because of how the fact with the forms of how the fact that um, 
You know, I've mentioned this before, the whole fact that I'm not a biggest fan of this level design in this particular game is the fact that, you know, it has way too many spikes all over the place. Well, I really appreciate it with the forms of Nightmare in Dreamlands because it usually re uh, recreates the fun factor in the forms of, um, you know, um, ever since the remake of Kirby's Adventure after all. So you can end up that everything else will be checked out from here. So yeah. Of course, uh, we actually come across into a, uh, a new copy ability, and uh, you can only use that for several vacations, which you forms of the mini transformation, or in this case, to be more accurately, a mini copy ability, which you, all you have to do for that particular uh, mini copy ability is to be able to actually squeeze through tight um, corners, or especially tight areas, or in this case, just to go through small areas, so you can then know that, like, um, you know how the fact with the previous room that I've already explored through? That way it should able to actually go on, uh, it should allow me to take me into a different portion of the actual room, or even to actually takes me to the forms of a brand new room we can actually just explore through. So, once again we have to deal with Box Boxer again, but even now I know how to do this with one unit of health, and oh yeah, there we go. But if you manage to beat the likes out of him, then if you go all the way up, and there's actually a warp star over there, which actually leads us to area 9, which is the forms of Candy Constellation. But again, I'm probably not going to do that just because I'm actually going to do world by world in a chronological order. I would, pre I would appreciate if I was going to be doing this world after this though, but ultimately though, I'm also able to go through world to world in a chronological uh, number order. So, although except the forms of um, er um, area 2 and area 1, because I managed to did area 2 first before I able to actually explore the majority of, um, you know, in area 1 after that. So, yeah, anyway though. Alright, so I need to get myself my beam, because you haven't guys seen beam for quite some time, but even then though, that's as far as you might as well consider this factor about. Um, aside from, um, I've already, um, shown you guys the magic ability, and especially noticeable with the forms of, um, you know, the missile ability, but even then though, there's actually a few more I would love to showcase off, and that's the forms of how the fact that there might be, um, Actually, I think I probably need to bomb for this particular, um, switch mechanic, because even then, uh, we've already explored from here from previously, so, yeah, because I keep on thinking about the fact that, yeah, because Beam doesn't able to actually reach further enough, so even then, though, this, this looks like a job for the bomb Kirby to deal with right there, so, expecting for this much, and we need to place it, or even, in this case, just drop it, will be for the better, so that way, if we do drop that, then we could able to actually activate the bomb, on the switch that way quickly make our way from here and that way we can able to actually get into the other route to be able to actually get to the mustard mountain officially and also we've got ourselves the ufo copy ability again so yeah it looks like we got ourselves uh two more areas on that specific section because we haven't exactly completely done with this walters yet because there's still more a lot more to come and kind of think about it though, is the fact that, uh, much like in any other world in this game, most notably in the forms of, um, you know, uh, World 2 or Area 2, which is the forms of Moonlight Mansion, and especially noticeable with the forms of, um, you know, uh, Cabbage Cavern, um, it's not that long of a world, it's just how the fact that you need to be able to actually go through these separate pathways, but the forms of how the fact with the forms of, you get the map from the get-go when you're able to actually just, uh, you know, find yourselves in the forms of one of those separate pathways, and there's also a couple of, um, separate pathways, if you manage to, like, depends on what routes you're gonna be taking to, um, it actually takes you to a different portions of the forms of the Mustard Mountains, so even now, no, that might be resistible for that, so... Speaking of mustard, is the fact that the, if you know what the mustard looks like, it's basically more accurately a, uh, a yellow sauce of any sorts, which I will admit though right away though, mustard is probably the worst, um, sauce I've ever seemed to try out. It's way too hot, and plus I didn't really like the texture of the mustard, well, other than being how the fact that I kind of prefer ketchup and especially salad cream and mayonnaise especially. Especially those with mayonnaise with salads because it's so treat, uh, treatable with the forms of, you've, um, you know, mayonnaise with the forms of um, salad itself. See if we don't want to classify for such. So anyways though, we actually approach into the goal section right there. But um, 
since the actual gold square doesn't um, shine enough, so this means we got ourselves only one treasure in this uh, um, this particular section, and now, and here we get is the forms of the color swap with the forms of Kirby himself, but he forms that little spray paint. So that should be worth a while. So yeah, let's go ahead and deal with another new um, um, mini boss fight that is actually introduced in this game, and that's the forms of the bomber. Which is basically an um, an airplane type of mini boss fight that um, you know it's it's pretty easy to deal with, especially noticeable if you're actually using a UFO. But on the other hand, though, I found this guy to be a pain in the ass to deal with right there. Although it might be kind of unpredictable at times, especially noticeable with the forms if you have to deal with the wind currents and stuff like for that, for that nature. Now I apologize for the uh, the forms of the strong language. I have to say this much, but even then, though, yeah. Yeah, here we go, so I was, oh, 26 one-ups, how about that then, huh? I'm guessing the game is gonna be very generous with me when it comes to getting extra lives. I'm probably not gonna get as many extra one-ups as of how it does it by comparison to the likes of, um, you know, Kirby, Nightmare, and Dreamlands, because, um, speaking of sub-games, is the fact that, um, you can't really play sub-games in the forms of the actual main adventure of the game, unlike in, um, you know, Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland, and um, especially compared to how it does it in the future Kirby games, well, usually you can't play sub-games in the forms of this game on your main adventure gameplay, even just like in the forms of, like, before, you know, Kirby Mouse Attack also does that tradition as well. But even then, though, aside from that, though, that's all I can really talk about for that one, point, one form or another. Oh yeah, aside from whenever I've already got myself uh, Mario Tennis Aces for the Nintendo Switch, I've also managed to pick up myself my screen protector of my Nintendo Switch, to be more specifically, a glass um, screen protection, because um, I heard from several uh, viewers out there, especially noticeable they have some uh, come across an issue with the forms of Nintendo Switch uh, dock, how the fact that you can able to actually get yourselves a lot of scratches, most notably in the forms of, you know, these little, uh, uh, you know, these little, uh, edges and stuff like that, you can able to actually put your Nintendo Switch on a dock and you can able to actually play that on TV. And then that way, it'll actually just give you some, uh, a d definitive way of experiencing with the forms of Nintendo Switch. And I can't able to actually use Spark to able to actually activate these bomb blocks. So, yeah, that's a pretty bad decision to make, so... But again, sometimes open world areas can be annoying to people because, again, every time you, re when you get, like, you know, a wrong copy ability to be able to actually access to these different areas, I mean, you have to go through the stuff. Even especially noticeable, like, the fact that you have to go ahead and backtrack until you're able to actually go through different rooms, and even then, though, you could potentially try to able to actually find your, uh, correct copy ability, and if you do that, then chances are you might as well be able to actually continue as normal, so that makes it a super insufficiency right there, so I must confess about this little kinds of stuff, so... But yeah, aside from that though, because of how the fact with the forms, I think there's a good reason why I've managed to got myself my glass screen protector from my Nintendo Switch, and including the most of the people out there, whoever owns the Nintendo Switch in the first place, is because of how the fact, the forms of how the fact that if you manage to place your, um, Nintendo Switch system into the actual dock, or the charging dock, I should say. But even then, though, that it might actually cause some scratch surfaces, most notably in almost to the actual screens itself. But even then, though, I think that's a good example of how the fact that how many people seem to always attempt to buy, um, you know, the green, uh, the gra uh, glass screen protector. Sorry for a little bit of a uh, pronunciation error, so I do apologize for that point or another for this point. But even then, though, yeah. So now we're moving on to the right side of the forms of Mustard Mountain. So even then, are we expecting we can able to actually come across into another uh, goal section? And especially noticeable, we might actually come across into a third boss in the game, which I'll explain more on that later. But even then, are we might as well be able to consider this factor. So it's a good thing I've got my burning again. So even then, uh, that way we can able to deal with the uh, the bomber. Uh, you know mini boss fight again, so there's nothing rewarding anything like that if you manage to able to deal with him, so it's just basically you have to like, um, exit out the area, so that's all you, that's the only reward you can get after you deal with the actual, uh, bomber, uh, mini boss fight, as far as you guys should already know about this factor, so anyways though, 
Of course, there was actually, um, although it's kind of sad, though, how the fact that, um, there's no high jump ability this time around, though, unlike in new forms of, um, you know, the ones in, uh, Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland, and especially those of all in Kirby's Adventure, how the fact that in Kirby's Adventure slash Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland, you can simply just able to actually jump higher, and you forms of how the fact with the forms of the high jump ability, you can simply do that no problem, but in this game, I felt really, really, uh, missed when it comes to able to actually see like, you know, uh, the high jump ability does not make its debut, um, you know, for this time and day. So even though that, I'm really, really sad. And I've, you know, yep, yeah, I'm already missing that ability already, so... You know, you get the other solutions there, so even then, no. There's also an alternative route you can able to take for this particular room itself, but I'm probably not going to risk it too much because of how the fact that... Oh, gosh, I keep on getting hit by this um, enemies too many times, though, which... Yeah, I might as well able to skip over for this giant Rocky here, so even then, no, that might be some... You know, seems the case, though, so... But hey, at least we got a burning ability back, so that's the only good thing, and let's disable that and able to actually get ourselves... Excuse me, Mr. Sword Knight. How dare you? <sighs> See, this is one of the negative things about enemies sometimes with the forms of some of these locations like this. Uh, depends on what sections you want to be in. Sometimes you can't really able to actually, uh, predict to able to actually inhale enemies easily than that. Oh, jeez, that giant Rocky. Excuse me, you need to be chill out. Even especially notice while you're trying to get some chill pills to able to actually just try to able to attack me that way. And you know what, Sword Knight? Screw you, because you just somehow attack me funny forms of actually going through blocks, which is kind of unfair though, if you ask me. So even then though, now we've actually access to the secret switch to able to actually go back into Rainbow Root. But of course we're not going to do that though, because we might actually discover a few areas throughout in the majority of Mustard Mountain. So... Hopefully we're able to actually get things there, so even then no, we're about to get started here, so... Things should get be a lot more interesting to say the least, but even then no, as I mentioned this before, uh, Mustard Mountain is basically a lava-themed world, so yeah, you get the idea, so... Surprisingly enough though, ever since you the likes of, um, you know, so many segments in the forms of, uh, Moonlight Mansion of any sorts, how the fact the matter is, is though, is the fact that I haven't really used my... Uh, telephone in this uh, few several vacations and he forms the of fact with the um, call outs for multitude of Kirby's only one screen Although there's actually one coming up in the forms of area 5 But even though no, we'll do that until we get to the next video see if no, no, that makes it a little bit more Consistency what if the forms of this factor as far as you might guys you already know and yeah so yeah, this is what the mini form comes into play, how the fact that you can able to actually squeeze for those little, uh, tiny, um, um, sections like this. And if we open up this treasure chest, we get ourselves a 1-up back, so, at least we actually got that back, see if we know, yeah. Um, uh, let's just go ahead and go explore through, um, this way, even though, no, gradually though, that it might actually contain, like, one of those arrows, uh, segments, notice. So if you don't know if that's the point, then I'm also able to actually I'm also able to actually transform into a mini uh, version of myself, and then I should able to actually just go ahead and go into the bottom road, and then that way I can able to actually just to discover even more sections noticing. So if you don't know, I'm also able to actually do with the boss fight for last in the forms of the mustard mountain itself. So if you don't know, everything else will be uh, ju just as welcoming as it used to be. So. Yeah, if you manage to go all the way down there, not to mention with the forms of Waddle Dees, with the forms of the Paracels with them. Speaking of such, Paracels do act out exactly like the ones in the forms of its predecessor, but in the forms of Nightmare and Dreamland, although it's nothing remarkably different about it. It's basically, it functions the same way as how it does it from before, so... Because, you know, there's not much anything else different, uh, different about it, so that might be considered this factor right there, so... And we ended up back into Rainbow Road, but because of since we've actually got back to Rainbow Road, now we can actually go into the other road and able to actually go to this goal sign right there. See, for that now I might as well do that that way before I get into the actual next boss in the game, or in this case, the third boss in the game. So yeah, you get the idea with that solution there. So the good thing that the meat or the food rather can respawn every time you're actually able to actually have an explore um, the areas for quite a long time, and especially noticeable in some cases like this. So, and I did not meant to um, obtain a spark ability by accident. I need to obtain the fireball or the burning um, ability. Dang it! And there's a good reason why. Is the fact that you know the um, 
Um, you know these little, uh, uh, stingy enemies? They always try to, yeah, you see those enemies there? Which, I'm not exactly sure what they are. It's the mirror, but it forms with those, um, enemies there. Um, if you manage to dash forwards right towards them, um, they actually easily get you, um, they easily, um, hide themselves. So if you don't know, you have to be very, very accurate with the forms of these little, um, you know the air projectile you have always attempt to fly with? And able to actually, um, press the B button while doing so. That way you should able to create a projectile and able to actually send it right back in the forms of, um, you know, the mirror. But he forms of that specific enemy. So, hey, we got the visibility lollipop. So, how about that then, huh? I kind of wish I was trying to able to actually go after those healing items, but I'm actually going to be going after those healing items at the actual goal mini game itself. So, with that being in mind, we have to approach the door on the right, or in this in this case for this matter, the mirror on the right. See, but then no, um, that way it will actually lead us to the goal itself. So. It's a good thing that there's no secrets to be found around here, other than being we have to come across into a mini fight. So even though now once again we have to deal with a boxy mini boss fight going on right there, so... But again, sometimes it takes forever to be able to deal some of the damage in the forms of mini boss fights, assuming if you actually get yourselves a carb ability with you, but... If you manage to able to actually send your carb ability projectile right back at them, it'll do certain damage, so even then, that, yeah. Of course, we got ourselves a magic uh, copy ability, and if you manage to hit the question mark real quickly, it will actually give you a random, uh, a random chance, so that way you can able to actually come across into one of those copy abilities you want to choose. See, so Fernando, that's that's just, that could be something else, but even Fernando, yeah, and yeah, yeah, I've got my uh, health back completely though, and yeah, so far we didn't get any one ups because. Um, sometimes these, um, one-ups can get, uh, can appear quite randomly, though, sometimes. Especially noticeable with the forms of how the fact that, um, you know, they appeared in different, uh, parts of the actual, um, auto-scrolling, uh, you know, goal minigame there. How the fact the matter is, is that, uh, how, um, you know, um... I don't know what to think about for that point. I do apologize about, about the fact with my awkward, um pauses in during my recording sessions at this point, even for commentary's sake, is because, well, you know, it's kind of hard to able to talk way too fast in these commentaries sometimes, but anyways, uh, in here, uh, it will actually leads us to, uh, World 6, which I'm probably not gonna do that just yet, slash, uh, Area 3, but it forms of Cabbage Area, or Cabbage Cavern, but I'm probably not gonna do that because I've already accomplished everything in Area 3, so, yeah, because I'll save Area 6 until when we go to, um, after accomplishing everything in, you know, Area 5. So even then, no, that's pretty simple and as far as you might be aware from that. So, I don't know why I double-checked in here. It's probably because I always attempt to able to double-check on those, uh, shiny doors or the shiny mirrors to able to actually enter in through and see if how the fat- What the? Oh, oh, okay, um, apparently, as you can see right there, um, the Meta Knight right there, match that comes into play every time you actually, I presume you can only able to actually get Meta Knight, that if you actually get yourselves a magic copy ability, like, I'm considering that green Kirby, match to able to actually use that magic, uh, magic ability, and then that way, it'll actually manage to select, uh, the Meta Knight symbol, which is the forms of the, uh, the Galactina, uh, sword icon, which basically, it functions like, uh, similar to the crash ability from, uh, you know, Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland, and especially noticeable in this game as well. Uh, but except the noticeable differences is the fact that, um, well, it pretty much functions the same way as it, uh, between the two, uh, skills or abilities and stuff. That Meta Knight can able to actually fly all over the place, all in one screen, and able to actually deal with everything. It, it, it basically functions like exactly, like, the second screen nuke ability, so that's pretty cool. And speaking of that, here we go ourselves. I mean, I could assume this might actually be, um, the final, uh, new abilities introduced in this game, but it forms off Qubit, which is basically a angel-style, uh, copy ability, which I- I rarely use that, honestly, though, because the only time you can able to actually find this, uh, copy ability so unique about this is the fact that you can able to actually fly as much as you like. So even that, not that, and you can also shoot these arrows as well, just like any forms of whatever you play, like, you know, something related to Kid Icarus and stuff like that. So, ah, oh, I did not meant to kill that cutter enemy because I need to... 
you know, get that treasure chest down there because it does require a cutter ability. So much so for that. So let's go ahead and just uh, go ahead and get that, which I've already accomplished that. And able to cut that rope. And that way we get ourselves a uh, one of our healing items. So that's about it, obviously. So... But that doesn't stop there, because we've already got ourselves four more areas left before we're able to accomplish everything in the forms of uh, Mustard Mountain. So, yeah, it's not too bad of a world, honestly, though. Although, the only thing you have to be keep in mind, though, is the fact that you need to be right on with that specific uh, map navigation. And it's best to know things out that I highly suggest you go after the map first before you're able to actually just notice something that are few different routes to take with the forms of, you know, Mustard Mountain itself. So, yeah, there's only one treasure in this room though, because again, there's some of these rooms in this particular uh, world themselves. Stupid little, um, Heavy Knight. I've always despised this guy in a huge passion, because they- he always trying to catch me off guard at one point or another, although it's not my fault for able to actually discover through everything. But it's just one of those things I've always attempted to get hit a lot. Even especially noticeable how the fact that, well, I've already mentioned this before, there's no block button because you know how the fact that with the forms of how the L and R buttons usually uh, force you to uh, utilize with the forms of the telephone system. Like, you know, the L button allows you to be able to go back to the actual main hub world. Oh, speaker of such, we got ourselves a Shadow Kirby again. And we got ourselves the exact same item, but it forms of the maximum tomato. So, that's alright, because I'm, I'm sure enough we can able to actually, um... Uh, keep on healing ourselves, but it forms of the future points of the actual worlds themselves. So, yeah, you get the idea with that solution. So, anyway though, as far as I was trying to say before, um... Oh crud, I've actually lost track of myself because there's not much else I can really talk about for this point in time, folks. Aside from being like, oh, please don't tell me we have to deal with a, yeah, we're doing with a battle fire again. And it's a good thing too that we're actually going to be fighting this battle fire in a right environment this time around though. Because, you know, he's actually based off a more like really a fire type enemy or the fire type mini boss fight, so... That makes it very um, insufficiency right there. So yeah, you're gonna be you probably get the idea what this little point's noting for anyway. So and plus, since we've uh, um, almost nearly towards the end of the forms of much, uh, mustard mountain, see Fernando. That's uh, now we've got ourselves our burning ability um, back. See Fernando. Now we can able to actually just go ahead and just you know. So yeah, you get the idea. So. Now, folks, we actually come towards the forms of the third boss fight in this game. And, um, honestly, this is probably one of my least favorite boss fights in the whole entire game. Not because it's hard or anything, but rather just because it's rather boring. Well, at least to my opinion, though, anyway. Of course, uh, just like in the forms of, uh, Kirby, Nightmare in Dreamland, and especially noticeable with Kirby's Adventure as well in Kirby's Dreamland 2, and especially noticeable with the forms of Kirby's Dreamland 3, uh, Krakow makes a return, but this time around though, what's odd about this is the fact that we're actually going to be fighting against with him in a lava magma theme level, which is kind of odd and bizarre at the same time. I'm guessing because of how the fact that um, we're actually going to be taking place in almost an out of um, higher up in the surface and stuff like that, but even then, there might be some consumptions for this throughout. And of course, one thing I don't like about this variation of Krakow this time around though, is that it takes way too long this time around. Because, you know how compared to how it does it in, um, you know, Kirby's Adventure slash Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland, that the high jump um, ability will definitely help in the forms of this particular boss battle alone. But the thing is about this boss fight though, is the fact that it feels kind of a little bit pace breaker to me though, because you, you always have to wait until you're able to actually just to predict Whenever when uh, Krako decides to able to lower it down at one point or another, so I found that to be kind of a little bit more insufficiency it's, it's when it comes to this particular honest opinion with that specific um, encounter with the forms of the actual Krako. So there we go. That's um, that is it. But the forms of Krako, but also we've managed to able to collect the third mirror shard piece, and also that fully wraps it up. But the forms of Mustard Mountain. So. Not too complicated of the world, but even then, no, um, it's just how the fact that the Krakow boss fight in this game, I will admit, though, is a little bit more, uh, almost like a pace breaker to me, though, but I digress. But I'm still able to actually beat this guy with no problem with, uh, quick time. But anyways, though, so we're gonna have to end things off here for this point, folks, so join me next time. Let's play Kirby and the Amazing Mirror for the Game Boy Advance. 
is the fact that we're going to be moving on to the fifth area in the game. Akusurin is actually known as Carrot Castle, so see you guys next time. Later, fellas.